away to the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good and good morning. morning to those who are joining in with us. Uh, welcome to a Helping Hand Ministries Christian Fellowship. <clears throat> and today, uh, our Sunday school lesson is going to cover uh, Expedient. The, the, members, the members of Christ. <clears throat> And we're coming out of, uh, the text is coming out of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 through 20. Yeah. Uh, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Uh, Father God, we thank you. And we praise you, Lord, because you are our God. And Lord, there's so many promises that you've given us about instructing us and teaching us and helping us to be more like you. So today, God, as we look into your word, I pray, God, that the word of God would, would shape us and mold us into to vessels that you can be well pleased with. Yes. God, I pray, Lord, for those who have any infirmities this morning, God, that you, God, will reach out and touch them. We know that your arm is not short and your, your vision is not dim, God. Mm -hmm. And I pray, God, that you will meet with them at the point of their need and help them, Lord, to be strong and encourage them, Lord, to continue to do the right thing. So as we look into your word, God, give us revelation knowledge. Open our eyes that we may be able to see and open our minds that we will be able to understand. And we thank you so much in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So this morning uh, we're uh, covering uh, members of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 12 through 20. A very interesting uh, lesson today and if you know anything about this particular uh, chapter you know that that uh, 
that it, it's, it's trying. <laughs> yes. It, and it's, it's, it's talking about uh, something that we don't normally or usually talk about. But guess what? We're going to talk about it today. We're going to talk about uh, uh, sexual behavior and sexual immorality. So uh, uh, we're going to, uh, to see if we can read uh, the scriptures today. Uh, Deacon McKinney, can you read uh, 12 through 15? Yes, sir. And then I'll read the, I'll read the rest. Amen. 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 The rest of your seven, uh, six. Uh, chapter six. Yeah, chapter six. Mm -hmm. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought brought under the power of any. Meat for the belly, and the belly for me. But God shall destroy both and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God has both, has both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that the Lord body of the members of Christ, shall I then take the members of Christ, the members of Christ, and make them the members of the harlot? God forbid. What? <clears throat> know ye not that, that he which is joined to an harlot is one body for two? says he says he shall be one flesh but he that is joined unto the lord is one spirit flee fornication every sin that a man doeth is without without the body but he that can commit a fornication sinneth against his own body what know ye not that you that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you yes. which you have of god and you have, and you are not your own, for you are brought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We ask God to bless the reading of His Word. Uh, this yeah. lesson is broken up into three three parts. Uh, the the part one is our body for the Lord, and that covers uh, verses twelve through fourteen. Uh, part two, members of Christ, that covers verses 15 through 17. And the third part is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and that covers verses 18 and 20. Yes. Uh, let's look at the facts. The facts are this. To see that all believers have set apart and, 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 ded and are dedicated to the Lord. So it's something about knowing who you are. And as a believer, to understand that you are set apart uh, uh, to the Lord. You're dedicated to him. So he has given us the right to be, uh, be, be a part of him. The principle is this, to understand that what holiness means in our daily lives. And, you know, there's something that we can do in our daily life. We can walk a holy life. And Jesus showed us an example of how to walk a holy life. Jesus showed us that we can do this thing and not sin because he did it and not sin. Yes. And it's something that we have to, uh, I don't want to say build up to, but it's something that we can walk in if we continue to trust and allow him to lead and guide us. Amen. The application is this, to seek holiness in our daily behavior, <clears throat> avoiding immoral and corrupt behavior, and replacing it with devotion to the word to prayer, and to serving others as they have need. Now, when we take the focus off of, off of our own strong desires and begin to focus on the needs and the cares and concerns of others, it changes the whole, the whole picture. It gives us a new perspective. And that's what, what, the, what this application is saying, to seek holiness in our daily behavior. The things that we go about doing, we need to go about doing those things and, and giving uh, credence to God for allowing us to do these things for others, to help others in the time of need or, or in despair or, or in distress. The golden text today is uh, coming out of uh, 
verses 19 and 20. It says, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were brought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Mm. And, and that's something that we uh, uh, need to, to probably read that, that particular, those particular verses over and over and over and over again until that thing is so in, embedded in our minds and in our hearts that we understand who we are. All right, beginning with, uh, with part, part one, it says, uh, our bodies, our body for the Lord. Uh, Paul begins this thing, this, this, uh, this out. He's talking about all things mm -hmm. are lawful for me. And when Paul made this statement, just think about this. Paul made this statement, and and well, let me let's let's go back a little bit. Let's mm -hmm. paint paint some history, mm -hmm. because even though this is the first letter that we are reading, Paul wrote a letter before this one, which is not part of the manuscript. And he made reference to the previous letter a couple of times already up to this point. So Paul had already instructed the Corinthians about their behavior. He already gave them instruction about what they should be doing and what they shouldn't be doing and how they should conduct themselves as believers. So somewhere along the line, they took something that he said and they twisted it. <laughs> you, know how, you know how we are. Amen. That somebody, Amen. Somebody will tell you something, and, and we twist it to make it fit whatever it is that we but we want it to fit. That's right. So Paul starts chapter six off, uh, well, not starting chapter six, but in verse twelve, mm -hmm. he says, "All things are lawful for me." Mm -hmm. So this is not the first time that Paul addressed this mm -hmm. issue about things being lawful for him. He talked about it in chapter five, and again now he's talking about it in chapter six. And he's addressing uh, some of the questions and problems that the, the Corinthian Christians had about uh, what, what God wanted them to do in regards to sex. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you say, what? Sex in the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> well, we see sex throughout the whole, the whole all the pages of the Bible. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and there's a, a proper way to do this, and we're going to talk about that. But the the, the Corinthian Christians took what Paul said, all things are lawful, and they applied it to the areas that Paul or or nor the Lord intended. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul didn't intend for them to misconstrue this. Mm -hmm. God didn't intend for them to, to misconstrue right. uh, the, the, the point of all things being lawful. Mm -hmm. So what, what happened? They used their liberty as a license to sin. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you think about this. They use their liberty as mm -hmm. a license to sin, meaning that, right? that because they, um, <clears throat> because they, they uh, it misinterpreted or used this, this, this thing that Paul said wrong, it, they went ahead and, and began to engage mm -hmm. in things that were not, not right. Mm -hmm. So Paul went on to say this. That even though all things are lawful to me, he went on to say, but all things are not helpful. Right, right. So even though they're lawful, they're not helpful. So we have to, as believers, we have to use discernment when it comes to, to things being lawful and things being helpful. Because <clears throat> the, uh, there's another scripture in Romans that says that if your heart convicts you, God is greater than your heart. Mm -hmm. So some people even use that scripture to say, well, my heart never convicted me. <laughs> you know, I, I can do this because I'm not being convicted by it. But, but is it helpful? So we have to measure that in. We have to, to couple that in, that concept, that, ide that ideology into to all things being lawful, but are all, things, all things are not helpful. And, yes. uh, and specifically, when it comes to uh, reference to the harlot, and see what was taking place mm -hmm. is that they had what they call temple harlots. <laughs> they had these these harlots and, and and or I'll use another word, prostitutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and it wasn't just female prostitutes; it was male and female prostitutes. And they had them uh, around the the temple, 
And so they were engaging in, in these, these, these sexual acts wow. with these harlots, with these prostitutes, and they, they to peace their mind, to, to get it straight or wrapped up in their minds of, that this was all right, they, they just said, look, all things are lawful. <laughs> and so that's the, the, the gist of what we're going to be talking about here. So uh, this was a, a culturally accepted, or this was culturally accepted in the city of Corinth. Mm -hmm. So this was something that they practiced. Right. I mean, and, and remember, when we first got into this lesson, we talked about uh, that, that, that it was a conflict between the church, remember the church in Corinth, and the, and the city. Mm -hmm. There was that conflict because the city was a powerful city. The city was a metropolitan city. The city had a whole lot of stuff going on, and then now you got the church. And so there was that, that, that struggle back and forth. And remember, we talked about that, that at some point in time, that uh, there was that uh, the, the church allowed the city to have an influence on it. Mm -hmm. So we can see right here that this is where that influence is, is, is taking, taking shape in, in this particular area, right. that they were engaging uh, the services of prostitutes. And even though it was culturally accepted, and it was uh, and it was accepted in the religious community among the religious pagans. So not 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 the uh, the believers. I mean, and, and in some cases, the believers too, because Paul is addressing this. He's talking to the the Corinthian believers right now, and he says that that they saw nothing wrong with uh, a person using the prostitutes. And that's coming out of verse 15. They didn't see anything wrong with that. They, they, uh, they accepted that as a, a, a common day practice. But Paul is saying, look, that, that this is not right. You know, this is not something that, that God intended, and this is not something that I conveyed to you. Mm -hmm. He says, will I be brought under the power of any? And what he's talking about this is that, that when you engage in these, uh, these, these, these acts, that that actually you're giving away um, you're giving away your power to the the person that you you embrace it mm -hmm. in a, in an unlawful way, mm -hmm. or you're giving your power to that person, and, and and it goes back to God saying this, that when the two are joined together, they become one flesh, mm -hmm. and so that's how God designed it. But when you join yourself to a harlot or to a prostitute outside of the will of God, that is something that God is not going to bless. So he's saying, am I going to give my power over to this person? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've heard the story, and I know I've heard it too, that everyone that you engage with, that, that you, you uh, carry that, that with you. <laughs> you know, that's something that, that you, because, because it, let me say this, the principle works. Okay, mm -hmm. the, God's principles always work. The two become in one. Mm -hmm. That all, that's a principle of God that works. And even if you do it outside of the will of God, it still works. And so what the what we're going to learn here today is God is saying this: that when you join with your wife, that's something that I can bless because that's a, a marriage covenant. That's mm -hmm. a covenant. Mm -hmm. But when you join yourself with a, a harlot or a prostitute. That's a curse because even though it works, mm. he said, I can't bless this. Can't bless. And so there's a big a stark difference. And so, so they misconstrued mis this. Mm -hmm. They used it wrong. And so Paul was using the phrase that he had used more than once. In chapter 7, he says, I will not be brought under the power of anybody, anybody as meaning a prostitute. Because guess what? You give if you give your power over, you're brought under that that person. So you're giving something to that person that that they shouldn't have. You're giving them a part of you. Now, if we're believers, and we were talking about Corinthian believers, mm -hmm. if we're believers and they were believers, they were giving themselves in an immoral act over to some something that that was that was outside of God's preview, outside of what God was going to do. Let me pause there for a minute. Any any questions or any concerns about that? Any responses? I, I think the pastor mm -hmm. should deal with um, since they're new believers too, in their environment with what they knew before they became believers. 
in the in the Corinth because you know they had all these other issues that right. were going on, especially um, with that. Um, and you know, interesting <coughs> about everything coming out of Aphrodite and, and all that, and, and the word itself, and being sex and twenty. But <coughs> when you become a new Christian, it's, it's, you got to change that. And right. that's what he's trying to institute change. Because right. all this is going on around them. They don't know they know better, but they don't want to know better. That's why they want to continue to kind of mix it together. Right. Because of the euphoria that comes out of it. Mm -hmm. what we're doing. Yeah. And you can make it right. And, and that's what and Paul's trying to un unmake it right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's trying to yeah. He's trying to make that, that crooked road straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and and you know, I mentioned before you walked okay. in that that um that Paul had already talked about these things, yeah. you know, and and I mentioned that that he had this is even though this is this is First Corinthians, there was a letter he wrote before this, right, right. And, and and somewhere in that instruction that he gave them instruction, he didn't he wasn't Paul was not shy about instructing people, you know, he told them the truth, he told them what they needed to hear, he told them what was going to help help them to to grow and become mature, and so he had already gone over this. Mm -hmm. And they took advantage of their liberty, you know, oh, by yeah, saying, yeah. well, because all things are lawful, yeah. <laughs> hey, this is lawful too. Yeah. You know, so they knew, in a way, they knew better, but yet taking advantage of their liberty, misconstruing that one phrase that he said, yeah. that all things are lawful. So, hey, if it's lawful, and then they tried to justify it. Let's, yeah, let's yeah. look at a, a, a practical point here. Did you have something? I was about to say, and then it says here, perhaps they was. Unbelievers married before they accepted mm -hmm. Christ, and so in that particular way, they probably was trying to carry on what they were doing, but they were doing before they yeah. were believers. Yeah, mm -hmm. and 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 you With know God. what? That's a that's a that's a good thought because yeah. well, we, it's, it, it wasn't of my own thought. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that my study Bible? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so the, it says this in a practical mm -hmm. point. Does God free us from the power of sin not to have us brought under the power, uh, its power again? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I used to say this, I'm, uh, sort of the same thing, that God's not going to save you from drowning in the ocean for you drowning in the swimming pool. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I mean, you might still drown in the swimming pool, but mm -hmm. what I'm saying is that God is not going to save us from the power of sin for us to be entangled with it again mm -hmm. in, a, in a different yeah. aspect. Mm -hmm. That when yeah. he freed yeah. us from sin, mm -hmm. he freed us from sin. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of it. And so this is just another area that they were getting entangled in. They, they, they got wrapped up in this, this concept that, that, uh, that, hey, this is all right. And we can see in the next verse, it says, they went on to say, food for the stomach, <laughs> and the stomach is for food. Mm -hmm. So they thought, <laughs> this is what they thought, that, that this was probably justification for giving their bodies whatever the body wanted. Mm. And, and, and you know what, and I, 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 did, I didn't study this part, but it just came to me. Gluttony. Yeah. You know, yeah. that, that, that uh, the, the body desires more. more. Give me more. And yeah. people get caught up in gluttony by giving the body what it's craving or what it wants. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we have to resist those things, you know. And, and I talk about the love of honey buns. Mm -hmm. You don't know that I, I was in the grocery store just the other day, and, and I passed a, a rack of honey buns four or five times. Mm -hmm. and, and, and my hand was going like this, but I didn't get the honey bun. <laughs> you know, you have to resist those things. At some point. And, and, yeah, and, and so this is what, what, what Paul is saying. So what they were actually saying, my body wants food, mm -hmm. so I eat. Mm -hmm. My body wants sex, so I hire a prostitute. Mm -hmm. And that was a big problem, that, that they didn't separate the two. Mm -hmm. And they thought that, that what they were doing had no effect on their spiritual relationship. Mm -hmm. And that was the whole concept, that this is it's two different things. Mm -hmm. You know, that my spiritual stuff is over here. And my engagement and, and what I do over here it has nothing to do with my spirituality. Just very quick, Pastor. Like you said, it, like you said um, earlier, and like you said next stage part I came in. But we could justify anything. Oh yeah. <laughs> and that's what it comes to. I mean, they, they had it, they, they knew it, they wanted it, but you can justify anything. If you mm -hmm. want to do it, you can justify anything. The reason for doing it. <laughs> yeah. And then also like my pop said, if you want to lay out, you can find
find a way out. Oh yeah. Like the scriptures, I will give you a way the means of escape. Yeah. You will find a way you out. You will find a way out. You like will. Pastor, I like how what you were saying about the honey bun. Me, my pops, my mom, my whole history of caffeine was horrible. Like I was addicted to caffeine bad. So I was in the store yesterday. <laughs> I passed by a body arm. I said, oh, body arm, they have caffeine in it. And I said, oh, no, no, Lord, you don't brought me away from that. But like we say in the scripture, um, we can be mastered by anything. I don't want to be mastered by anything. God mm -hmm. gave us self-control. Right. Especially as a young person, it's hard at times. But if you can control your body, man, you can control God. Oh, yeah. Wow, it's, I can't even get the words out. Oh, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Control, yeah. You can and, and you know what? Here. And and, and I, yeah. I said this weekend uh, when I was uh, teaching in, in, in uh, North Carolina, okay. the, mm -hmm. the, the, the will to live, Right. It's strong in a young man, mm -hmm. you know, and, and if you can capture the, the, the strength and the energy of a young man, I mean, it, 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 it makes a world of a difference. I mean, and that one, that one young man can impact so many different people. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you know, the Catholics, uh, and not to tout them, but they said, if you give me your child mm -hmm. uh, and by, by a certain age, and by the time we get finished with them, they indoctrinate. Mm -hmm. And that's what their whole philosophy is. Give them, give them to us when they're young, and yeah, they go so through they, all of these little trainings. You know, when they, when they before six years old and up, you know, catechism and all of that stuff. And then by the time they come out, they're indoctrinated into that that belief or that system, and and they'll still say even if they grow up mm -hmm. and and introduce to something else, they'll still say I'm Catholic. Mm -hmm. You know, they identify with that because they've been indoctrinated to that. Their, their young mind was molded to the fashion as to what, that's what they want. And, and you know, not to get off track, mm -hmm. since we're talking about that, uh, and you look at some of these countries mm -hmm. that they take their children when they're very young and they send them, you're going to be uh, uh, an artist. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be this, and you're going to be that. Engineer, I mean, wherever they are, they, they start them out at a very young age, gearing them toward whatever that, that yeah, skill set yeah. is. Yeah. And so they grow up and that's all they know. Yeah. And so now when, they, when they're grown, they're in their 20s, guess what that was? Artist, mm -hmm. engineer, a doctor, you know, and, and so they have been indoctrinated into that system. Pastor, just real quick, Old Testament standard. Then going and given to priests, you know, he's, you know, at an early, at a, at at a, early once, age. Once he's weaned. Yeah. Oh, Mm -hmm. Give them, give them away for just that reason, for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Set aside for that purpose. Yep. In that and, case, it was. And guess what? And Samuel didn't veer from it, did he? No, he didn't veer didn't from, it. from it at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we can't say, you know, that for his sons, and, and part of that because he, he, you know, wasn't there with his sons. Mm -hmm. And we know that story. Right. All right. So uh, Paul goes on to state that the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. <clears throat> And 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 the, and the Lord uh, for the body. So what is he saying here? He's saying to to those Corinthian uh, Christians. He said, "Look, that's what you engage in is immoral. So the body is not designed for that. That's not what we design. Your body was designed for for God. And and let's go step one step further. It says that we are the what? The body of Christ." <laughs> So think about it. So, so if we're the body, and, and, and a couple of weeks ago I said that the church, really, is, we're the church, which is the body of Christ. We're the bride of Christ. And we were designed for him. So that means that all of the things that he's given us, we should do it under his preview or under his guidance of, of how to conduct that. And so that's what Paul was, uh, was trying to get across to these uh, Christian, uh, Corinthian Christians. So Paul was not going to let them use something that applied to food. Because really, all things are lawful applied to food, mm -hmm. <laughs> if we wanted to think about it. You know, if you go back and read the text and see what Paul was actually talking about, that, that phrase that he made applied to food. He wasn't going to let something that applied to food restrictions ap apply to sexual immorality. And so they, they took the, the, the liberty, they took advantage of their liberty and said, we're going to make it apply. You know, like we said, you, 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 can, you can make anything apply to anything. You can, you can use scripture to back up whatever thought process you have if you, if you, wanted, if you to. wanted to. 
And I'm thinking, why would we want to do that? Why would we want to misconstrue or misinterpret scripture? You know, what's the reason behind that? So that we can have fun? <laughs> you know, so we can, we can uh, enjoy uh, some of the, the pleasures of the world? I mean, what, what's the motivation or what's the reason behind that? Pastor, just real quick, you know, in mm -hmm. Galatia, he had the same issue with living. They, they thought that, you know, they thought that once they became saved, they had liberty to do what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's dealing with that here, but he dealt also with this in, in the um, letter to the Galatians. So, yeah. this, so it's not unique that, and, you know, dealing with new, new, new Christians too. Yeah. Know, so, yeah. And trying to make that cricket roll. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, so Paul goes on to tell them that God's going to destroy both of them. Mm -hmm. He's going to destroy your, your, your stomach. <laughs> you know, because he's what else is he going to He's going to destroy that, that sexual desire <laughs> to be misused. <laughs> and, and he's going to hone that thing back in. And, and you know what? And when, when it comes down to it, and, and, you know, as we get older, we understand this. It's not all about sex anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not. I mean, because, cause, you know, as you get older, you realize that it, 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 it takes on a different meaning. Mm -hmm. and takes on a, a, a different um, aspect. aspect of your life, yes. you know. So, it's the, the, you know, it's just, I'm, when I want to say sex, I, I mean intercourse, mm -hmm. okay? It's not all about intercourse. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about communication. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, it's about... Uh, intimacy and and you know being intimate not only with your your spouse your mate being intimate with God yeah. because when we as we are intimate on that level we we have a deeper meaning and a deeper understanding of what God wants to do in our life That's right. and, and it becomes relevant and sometimes we don't catch on to that till we you know we <laughs> we seen this <laughs> you know we <laughs> You know, it's like, oh, Lord, if I can go back, yeah. you know, do some yeah. things differently. <laughs> and, you know, Pastor, this, this, this is real quick how in Hosea, when, when, when Hosea was dealing with, with Gomer, and how, you know, this this is nothing new on the sun, so this is going on in the Old Testament. How he took the, the, the sex thing, say, you know, you forgive for that, but you can't, and God is always my how, how don't idolize that because it will become an idol and, and idolatry. And, and using that, because anything will become idolatry and using the sex and everything else, how it becomes an idolatry when God wants you to have seek him first. If you seek him first, your body's the temple and, and all of that. And and that is not the way he put it put it put it in line. So it's mm -hmm. all about lining everything up. Right. Because God is is is, is, is created, he created that. He understands right, that. Right. And some people still use that today. Well, God created it should be okay to do it. No, he's putting it all he created for. Like the internet, internet could be a good thing, mm -hmm. but how much is used for bad? Eighty percent of it, if you look, is is in the dark web or bad. But the twenty percent, you know, it's it's a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But how man has taken mm -hmm. all this and turned into a yeah a bad thing. Where mm -hmm. the enemy comes in and how it becomes a bad. Oh thing. yeah, yeah. And that's normally how it happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. things meant for good for men's, you know, the bad ones got like I said, oh, you turn it around yeah. or something. Else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like you were saying earlier, that uh, you take the Bible and, 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 and use it to your benefit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and not to get off the subject, but like back in the slavery, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a slave submit to your master. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, 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 and they took that, yeah. and I mean, yeah. they stressed yeah. that right. thing out. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that thing so was that stressed right. out all proportion, wasn't it? <laughs> that's why I said study to make that sense. Mm -hmm. And use it for 400 years. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and some of them was, to this day, still try to enforce that. Yeah, you know, right. not though, though slaves been abolished, but they still, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he went on to say that one day God will destroy our stomachs and the sense of being dependent on food and, and affected by hunger. And, and you know what? Uh, are we going to eat when we get to heaven? Sure, we're going to have feasts. We're going to have parties. Mm -hmm. But yet, our desire is not going to be for food. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, I, and I keep trying to run this thing through my mind. Our desire is going to be, be to worship him. Mm -hmm. You know, because, and, and you know, <laughs> I pick on people sometimes. I pick on myself. You know, when we get to heaven, we're going to see, you know, all of these folks that we know. And we're going to, hey, I'm going to be so busy praising God. 
that by the time I, I get around to seeing you, it might be a thousand years, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I don't know if that's going to be the case, but yeah, yeah. I'm saying that, yeah, yes, that yeah. our, our focus and our mindset when we get to be in the presence of God is going to be different from what we think is what yeah. we think right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we can't even uh, imagine heavenly things, you know, that's just far above uh, 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 the way our imagination, yeah. you know, we can try, but we can't even get there. So when we get there, it's going to be completely different. You know, some people out here, they're going to put on their high heel shoes and, <laughs> and you know, their Stetsons and, and all of that stuff and dress up before God. Yeah. But you know what? I think we're going to be naked. You know, we're going to be bare. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to, just like Jesus, when he, he, was, when he ascended into to, to heaven, you know, he didn't have anything. He, had, he didn't take anything with him. You know, and I think that that's that bareness. He wants us to come before him bare. Adam, Adam and Adam in the garden. They were, they were naked and, and were unashamed or unafraid of however you want to say it. But guess what? That the moment sin crept in, they hid yes, themselves. Yeah. So and I think that, that there's going to be a reversal of fortunes that, that when we get to be in the presence of God, that there's something that's going to happen to where our nakedness, we're not going to be ashamed of our nakedness mm -hmm. because guess what? It's not going to be a sexual thing when you look at somebody that's naked. You're, yeah. going, you're going to see your sister, you're yeah. going to see your brother and, and the Lord. You know, it's not going to be something that you're going to be be getting caught up in lust. Lust is going to go away. Oh, that's gone. And, and not to be vain, I, I hope my, my, my 20 year old nakedness this and not my... <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> and it goes on to say that our bodies uh, will, will, will um, be raised up by the Lord at the resurrection uh, so that, that our bodies will not regard food in the same way that it does right now. In the same way, our bodies will not regard sex in the same way it regards it right now. Mm -hmm. And so, so you have to always you have to ask yourself the question. And that's always two, two questions, <laughs> <laughs> two responses. Uh, all right, why did God create that act anyway? One was for, for re re procreation, right? Right, right? You know, multiply, yeah. you know. And then the other one was for pleasure, pleasure. right? Yeah. But they both need to be done under his watchful eye. Yeah. And I mean, he is watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, not that he, he's like that, but... <laughs> You know, he, he, sets the, he sets it down, and mm -hmm. this is how it should be done. So, and, and so we engage in, in the act, and it's, it's unlawful that we engage in the act, and it's purely for pleasure. It has nothing to do with God. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you can, you, oh, baby, I love you. <laughs> so how many times uh, have we heard that, that or yeah. said that? Yeah. Well, well, go read the Song of Solomon. Go, go, go read the, the Song of Solomon. Yeah. You know? Song, song. Oh yeah, yeah. He's go, go read it. It's, it's a I mean, that's all about love. That's oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And he go read it. And breaks that down. <laughs> you you talking about poetic? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that you know, brother was like, that's some heavy stuff. That brother was playing. Yeah, and that you know, you put that in perspective. That, put in, in perspective. Like, see, that's the word. Yeah, yeah. Perspective. <laughs> you know, and that's and that's everything. Like I said, the heaven uh, when we. Be in heaven, it, all that I did not desire for whatever. Mm -hmm. Like you said, one purpose, and that's to serve God, mm -hmm. praise and worship God, as we should be doing here. Right, mm -hmm. right. And that's a practical and point. God's people find ultimate fulfillment in pleasing Him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and you, you can't get around that. That's the purpose. Mm -hmm. you know, that's the purpose. People ask, what, what, well, well, what, and you know, you get the thing. Why are we here? What, what our reason of being here? Mm -hmm. God put you here. To serve, to pray, and serve mm -hmm. now. Yes, mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then uh, the next practical point says, the power that raised Christ from the dead is at work today to free believers mm. from bondage of sin. Mm. <clears throat> so that same power that raised him from the dead is at work to free us from the bondage of sin. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and we understand that. We know that he took the key. He went down to, to Hades. He said he took the 
the, the, the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Mm -hmm. he, I mean, he stripped them of those. He doesn't even have the keys to his own place anymore. And, and we need to understand that, that, that we've been free. We've been, he set the captives free. And not only those who were captives <coughs> beforehand, but everyone after that has been, been set free. We can walk in freedom and don't have to be in bondage to, to that, that sin. Okay, uh, part two. Members of members of Christ. I didn't, I didn't put that on do not disturb, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll make sure I do that next time. Mm -hmm. Paul went on to say this. Do you not know? Now, that that's a... That's one of those rhetorical questions because they knew, but he was addressing them. Do you not know that that uh, so it was apparent that many of the Corinthians did not know, or they thought that that the sexual conduct with prostitutes had no connection with their relationship with Jesus. But he said, "Look, do, did you not know this? Yeah, of course you knew this. Why? Because I told you." And, and, and any, any comments on that before we move on? And so Paul reminded them, your bodies are members of Christ. And, and so we need, to, if, we're, if our bodies are members of Christ, then we need to, to conduct ourselves accordingly. So when an individual Christian commits sexual immorality, it dis disgraces the body of Christ. And so we need to think along those lines that, that this act that I'm doing, this immoral act, and, and let, me, let me break this down a little bit further because the immoral act wasn't just having sex. They were doing other things. They were the fornication. Mm -hmm. You know, they were uh, practicing, I mean, whatever you could, I don't even want to paint any pictures mm -hmm. about what they were doing. It wasn't just having sex. It was all kind of degradation. Mm -hmm. And we see that permeated even in the Roman society. Yeah. You know, that not only back then in that that culture, mm -hmm. but that thing was, was blown way out of proportion in the Roman uh, yeah, uh, era. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that and, you know, we have a lot of things that we do that's based on the Roman rule or the Roman law, even today. Mm -hmm. And so some of that same old degradation carried over. Mm -hmm. And so Paul is saying, did you not know? Sure you know. And guess what? I'm going to explain it to you one more time. <laughs> and that's, that's good to hear it one more time. He who is joined to a harlot is one body with her. And for two, he says, that the two shall become one flesh. In the sexual relationship, a husband mm -hmm. and wife becomes one flesh in, the way, in, in a way that is under God's blessings. So now, that's what he's getting home. He's hitting home. That, that when, you're, when you're married and you do this, it's under God's blessings. He says, but outside of that marriage covenant, the partners become one flesh in a way that is under God's curse. Ooh, I mean, that's a tough one right there. I mean, because we have believers that are living together. They're not married. They're living together. Mm. Yeah, I think they call, what they call that, shacking up? <laughs> I, don't they, I don't know if they still use that term. But you know, that's my that's my partner or my my significant other. Yeah. And 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 I'm not trying to, to step on anybody's toes, but God is saying, look, we need to get this thing straight. If you want to truly be blessed by God, we mm -hmm. need to do it His way. And I mean, we can't shortcut that. You know, we can't bend a little. You know, say, you know, like the three Hebrew boys. Yeah. You know, oh, let's just bow, bow down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because even if you start doing this, yeah, that's look. bowing down. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we need to learn how to straighten up and yeah. say, look, I'm going to trust God that he can help me get this thing straight. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and I know it's all kind of reasons. I had a friend that, that was in a relationship, and and it was all about money. That that the person that he was in a relationship with was getting a uh some kind of alimony check or something. Yeah, they yeah. didn't want to mess that up. <laughs> and so there was about money. Yeah. yeah. And, and and they both were believers. Mm. And so it, it came down to the point that that after being talked to, look, we need to get this thing straight. Yeah. That that the money didn't become an issue anymore. Let me go ahead and make this thing right. Wow. So they got married and they've been married and blessed ever since. Amen. But you gotta get it straight. Some of the situations that about people having children, and and they should act up, but you know you got a social security check coming to your children, so mm -hmm. or something you know to the effect that they do you lose lose the money. But 
the one thing real quick, Pastor, is that today, scripture not being hard, it's, people look at it, it the Bible's not relevant anymore because mm -hmm. these other things that have happened. It's, God's the same today. Yesterday. That's right. And, and, and forevermore, and forevermore, right? It doesn't change. Nothing's new under the sun. Mm -hmm. But people can make it work for them. Back to justification. <laughs> so you, you put the say the Bible doesn't work, or you, if you bring it up, you're 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 bigot. If you bring it up, um, um, you judge me. If you bring mm -hmm. it up, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. all these different things to, to make it work. Mm -hmm. Now no one says it's gonna be easy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now that's that's the one word that hasn't come out. It has not been said it's gonna be easy. Mm -hmm. and not to say you're gonna fall. The thing is, you get caught up. Legitimately, you try and get that lifestyle come in. Paul's dealing with lifestyles here. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing we, we, we make sure that he's not dealing with just a, a unique situation. Mm -hmm. It happens, you try, you fall. That's why Jesus came. But it's that lifestyle we're doing. I know everyone talks about food and all the different. But we're talking, he's trying to change a lifestyle. Right. Yeah, something that's been embedded. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah lifestyle. And, and you know what? And, and if we allow him, and I, and I say that, if we allow God, Allow Jesus Christ to come in. He can change our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And and it, you know, people want to talk about what they've been exposed to, and and they want to hold on to to how they grew up, and 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 you know, they want to hold on to those things. But you allow God to come in. He can make a change make in your change. life. He can give you a new a new attitude, a, mm -hmm. a new perspective mm -hmm. on life when you start serving Him. And you know that, and you find out that that those things that that you were exposed to as a young child that. Mm -hmm. That, uh, that don't matter. I mean, not that they don't matter. I don't want to make light of them. Mm -hmm. But guess what? In the light of God, they become shadows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so he caused those things to become shadows that troubled you, those things that, that bothered you. You can turn that stuff over to him. And that's what he says when he talks about casting your cares on him. Mm -hmm. And he says, the reason I say that is because I care for you. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to walk around with that baggage is what he's saying. You know, you you check your, you check your bag. Well, like the yeah, husbands, you know, it's not easy. You know, you still got that oh, yeah. desire, oh, yeah. you know, the temptation to do it, you uh -huh. know, to get that honey. Yeah. It's still there. Yeah, like Paul, hey, Lord, take this take this thorn out of my side, you know. He said, no. He said, my grace is sufficient. And, and, and when we learn how to walk in that grace, mm -hmm. when we learn how to, to, to allow God to, to give us that grace, then the, the, that desire doesn't go away. But it doesn't become a strong desire. It's strong, that's right. You know, that just is when we get the strong desire. Says yeah. that every man is drawn away by that strong desire. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, sure, I'm, I'm <laughs> and you know what? I, I may break down one day and get a honey bun. <laughs> but you know what? It's not every time I go on the store. I'm not buying six of them. I'm not buying six of them. I used to, I used to they come in little packs yeah, by the whole pack. pack. Yeah. It's not your lifestyle. Yeah, <laughs> lifestyle change. Amen. And so it says this, in the heat of a lust and lustful passion, spiritual things seem so far away. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know. I mean, we, we think about, you know, have we been down that road? Mm -hmm. You know, because we throw stuff out the <laughs> mm -hmm. throw stuff out the window. Yeah. And, and and so in the in the heat of lustful passion, spiritual things may seem to be far away. But yet at the root of most lustful passion. There's a desire for something, even at the root of that. There's a desire for love, acceptance, adventure. And, and, and so th those things are, are good, but we need to get it on the, the right side. You know, because God wants us to have a, a, a strong desire for, for our mate. Mm -hmm. And guess what? If you're single, he wants us to have a strong desire for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and guess what? He knows what you need. <laughs> does he knows what you need and and just like Adam didn't ask for for a mate did he I know I'm touching on something now. <laughs> Adam didn't ask for uh, God said he saw that there was no nothing suitable right uh -huh. it was not one suitable for him <clears throat> God brought him a mate Mm -hmm. And Adam used that way on too. Oh yeah. But he said you gave one, him. one you gave <laughs> one you gave him. <laughs> one you gave him. Yeah. I didn't ask for it. But ain't that just like man? <laughs> Take the blame yeah. off of me. <laughs> yeah, you gave him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it says that all of which is far better and more completely satisfied 
in a one spirit relationship. Mm -hmm. What's a one spirit relationship? What is what I mean, think about it. What is a one spirit relationship? The, the same God. Your relationship and his relationship, you you know, one spirit, you know, mm -hmm. with God. Yeah. Both of you are connected to that. Mm -hmm. That same right. that one that one spirit. And and if you if you in a immoral state of life, you can't have that relationship with God. You know, and, and we talked about a couple of lessons earlier how how Paul's dealing with the temple as a corporate thing and that spirit being in in the corporate area, you know, a couple of lessons back, right? Mm -hmm. And how now he's dealing with the, the individual. So how but it's still the spirit, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is still in that individual mm -hmm. and it's in the corporate. Mm -hmm. And it's all supposed to be the same. We all abide with that. It should be the same to make that crooked road straight. And that's how we do it today. The sermon, you ain't made no know something's not right about this. And that should be enough to, to, to look and see, looking for that way out. Mm -hmm. There's something not right about this. And anything, whether mm -hmm. it's this or honey buns or anything we yeah. do. Yeah. Something's, something's not, not right. right. Yeah. yeah. Something something's off. Something's off about that. Yeah. <clears throat> but then uh let me see. Here we go. All right. Is that the one I want to lay on? Not really. Uh, sexual immorality, as a practical point, is acceptable in our culture, but still offends God. And and it was not only in that culture, mm -hmm. in our culture, but guess what? It still offends Him. You know, because God is still saying, "Look, hey, come unto me. You know, all ye who are heavy laden and burdened, mm -hmm. and I will give you rest." The individual. So He's still calling the individual to come to Him. And when we come to him and we embrace him, guess what? It changes us. And it's a change that needs to take place on the inside. And we're going to hear a little bit more about this during the message today. That, uh, that how God wants to, to do something on the inside of us that's going to manifest itself on the outside. Uh, we're going to go to uh, the temple of the Holy Spirit at the third part of this lesson. Paul says this. <laughs> Flee. <laughs> Look at, uh, <laughs> I done got off the page here. I don't know what I was looking at. But I, I got off 20. He said flee from. Uh, flee, yeah. Sexual That's what he says. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. He says flee fornication. Yeah. So Paul is saying flee sexual immorality. <clears throat> That's what he's saying. He's telling them uh, to do like Joseph did. Remember Joseph? Yeah. Joseph, he didn't hang around. He got out of and even when, when she grabbed his, his, his tunic, his coat, he left that there. He said, I'm out of here. He fleed. He didn't, you know what? But we want to bargain. Yeah. That's what we want to do. We want to bargain. Mm -hmm. We want to say, uh, see how brave we are, how, how much we can resist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've been in those situations. Oh, yeah, I'm going to see how much I can resist. Yeah. But you know what? Why put yourself in that, that, that position where you're trying to, to test yourself to see how much you can resist? God is saying, flee from the, the very presence of it. You know, yeah, go. And I mean, you got to leave. I'll be back. <laughs> Don't come back. I'm going to, and I, and I remember those, I'm going to the store. And then I think they probably think I'm still at the store. <laughs> hey, boy, it's been a long time. When he coming back? <laughs> but but Paul says, uh, he's, he's not saying, he does not say flee sex. You notice that? He's saying flee immorality. Mm -hmm. Right? Because immorality takes on different shapes. Like I said, it's just not dealing with sex. Yeah. Immorality it takes on different forms. Mm -hmm. So he's saying flee immorality. And so that, that precious gift that God gave to mankind, it's a precious gift, and, and it was meant for, uh, for a bond that, that was a powerful bond between a, a husband and wife. And that true one flesh relationship or that one flesh relationship, a spiritual relationship with God. You know, the two shall become one. And, and, and that concept, you know what? I don't even think we, we really think about what that means. Mm. The two becoming one. You know, and, and, and we have so many gadgets now today. You look at the computer. You have a, a, a female 
uh, connection and you have a male connection. Mm -hmm. And then you put them together and they become one. And, and, and you see that all over the place. And, and the, the, the concept is there, but, but I think that we, we, we get hung up on something that we don't, we don't relate it to, to a spiritual thing. Yeah. But God is saying, look, the only way that you can truly be connected with me is what? Get plugged in. <laughs> That's what he's saying. You got, we got to get plugged into him. And then he told us how to do it. It's through Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we get plugged into God through Jesus. Jesus is the bridge. We, we, we put words there, but it's still, the, the, we got to have that connection. And that's what Paul is talking about. And he's telling them that, that uh, many fall because they underestimate the, the power of the lustful passion. And, and we see people that, I didn't expect that. <laughs> you know, I didn't expect that. You know, and, and, and I'm going to give you an example. Because how, how can you be comforting somebody who just lost a, a loved one mm. and the next thing you know you end up in, in a lustful situation? Mm -hmm. I mean, because that line is so thin. Mm -hmm. you know, And so that's what I'm talking about is that, that we shouldn't underestimate the power <clears throat> of, of a lustful, of lustful passion. Yeah. You know, and, and, and when it's going to show up. I mean, we don't know what's going to... Yeah. They didn't expect that. We least expect. <laughs> wow. So, and uh, and so, uh, some think that they're gonna test themselves. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> see how strong. I'm gonna see how strong I am. How long, how much I, I can take before I, I have resist. to run. <laughs> and, and and you know what? He already told us up here. Flee. Don't even get that far. Flee. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And take off now. Do like Joseph. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. So, um, and, and he goes on to talk about that, um, that when, when you sin in this way, uh, you sin against your own body. So we sin against, not only we sin against our own body, we also sin against the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so Paul is saying, look, uh, it isn't, it isn't uh, sexual. It's not saying that sexual morality is worse than any other sin, but he's saying that that uh, it has a unique effect on the body. You know, you find someone that's caught up in in all these different things. Where's their mind at? You know, some people lose their mind. You know, it has an effect on the body, and and. and God is saying, look, I'm trying to spare, I'm trying to spare you from this. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I want to do. I want to save you from, from going down that road. So it affects you physically, and it also affects the moral and the spiritual part of you, too. I mean, because those are the parts that we need to hold on, the moral part, the spiritual part. Those are, those are some, that's the good stuff. But you get that, that, uh, what they say, bitter and sweet water don't come out the same fountain. <laughs> you know, so if you're trying to mix a little bit of bitter water in with some sweet water, that's not going to mix. The same way all the water don't mix, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, you can shake that stuff. <laughs> shake it. Separate. It look like it's blended, yeah. but let it sit there. It'll separate big time. Yeah. And so that's what Paul is talking about. And so we got a, a practical point here. Um, and I got uh, uh, sexual sin holds men and women in bondage. God desires that they be set free. So if, you, if we're going to be set free, if we're going to be set free, that means we got to get ourselves straight with God, right? Yeah. That we need to acknowledge God that, that there's some changes I need to make. And, and I'm not even talking about what we do in private. You know, I'm not talking about that. You know, but that's something that each one of us is going to have to to own up to and, and and be accountable for. And then he went on to say, "Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. A temple is a place sacred to God. A pure place where God can come and worship with us. I mean, undefiled. And so, and if and if we are filled with the Spirit." Our sexual behavior. If we're filled with the Spirit, that in check. Yeah. <laughs> it says, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, 
Guess what? We belong to him. Spirit, soul, and body. And then I think I have one last uh, practical point here. God has paid the price for believers to glorify him and their body. So when we talk about glorifying God, what do we mean by that? Anybody, just give some comments on that. What do we mean by glorify God in our bodies? By doing what's right. Mm-hmm. By doing what's right. Like my brother said, too, your lifestyle. Yeah. Your lifestyle will glorify God as well, too. Mm -hmm. Not knock anyone down, but also the food you eat and things, because it can prevent health issues and a lot of different things. Oh, yeah. But it's overall, yeah. everything is yeah. a lifestyle change that glorifies God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and that's good, and and you know what? And something we need, that's something we need to give thought to. Right. You know, what man or what person would build a bridge without first calculating the cost? Mm -hmm. So God wants us yeah, don't yeah, yeah, not yeah, to be yeah, blind yeah. going into to this. Yeah. You know, we need to make a conscious decision. Yeah. You know, we a conscious decision is Lord, I'm acknowledging I need some help. Yeah, yeah. conscious decision. And then you tell him the areas that you need help in. Yeah. And then you you move in that, that, that area. You move toward that getting that thing straight. And God, guess what? He's going to be there to help you. He's going to be there to, to, uh, to, to, to guide you through, to help you maneuver through those, those areas. And, and I just remember, and I, I'll share this, back, you know, back in the day that, that uh, when I used to get my head tight, <laughs> And I accepted the Lord. <laughs> I said, God, I, I don't want to give that up. I didn't want to give it up. I mm -hmm. said, because I like the way, and this is what I said out of my own mouth. I like the way it makes me feel. Mm -hmm. And you know, God said to me, he whispered in my ear, he said, try me. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, God. And during the next six months, I was in such a, 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 a spiritual, uh, drunken spirit. Mm -hmm. That, that what I thought I was missing, I didn't miss it at all. So God took care of that, that thing that I felt I needed. He, took, he wiped it clean. And, and it was like, whoa, God. <laughs> I mean, that's good. That's some, and, and that's the reason I can say, hey, I like that. That's some good stuff. <laughs> and God is. I'd like to add on to that, too, what you said. That's the same thing as anxiety, too. We think something's gonna be so bad, but when you get it, hey, it's not bad as I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Same shit is crazy, yeah. man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And, and so anyway, so that's uh, that concludes the lesson. Any comments before we close the prayer? I, I like what uh, what, what Paul with, with this. I think that, and we don't cover this lesson. He tells you this is wrong, mm -hmm. but in, in in chapter seven, like the, I call it marriage chapter. You know, first Corinthians, mm -hmm. he deals with how to deal with it. Yeah. How, how to, you know, you flee, mm -hmm. or if you don't, but if you're burning so much, you need to get married. Right. You know, so, you know, you flee, that's, those are two options. You flee or get married. Or get married. Because right. the, the desire is so strong, you go get married. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, and that's what he just said. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but, but you, and, got, and, you got those choices. You know? And, you know, and, and for those who may be listening, um, you know, trust God. Mm -hmm. You know, don't allow the circumstances or the comfortableness of your situation to to make you not do the right thing. Amen. And uh, and so we want to just thank Him for that. Yes. All right, let's close in prayer. Uh, Father God, we thank you. Thank you. And we know, Lord, right now that Your Word is truth, mm -hmm. life, and power. And it says power to change us, God. Power to to have us conform more to your image and more to your likeness each and every day. And we thank you for that. Yes. So I pray over this word that we shared this morning, God, in our Sunday school lesson, that you, Lord, will not let it return to you void, but accomplish what you sent it out to do. Yes, Lord. And that's to help us, to give us clear understanding. And we thank you thank in you. Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.